Bonjour. Bonjour. Dan. And Sam here with NowhereFastEverywhereCool.com. We are now six months into our midlife gap year and wanted to take some time to tell you about where life on the road has taken us. We've driven about 11,000 kilometers on our 2017 Ural Gear Up sidecar and we're back in the south of France at our house sit that we originally started at. In this three-part seven video series, we get to know a little bit about how we planned this adventure and also the highlights of the places that we've been. As well as how we feel about being on the road for the last six months. Part one, planning. We basically sold off everything we owned so that we would not be tied down with any debts back home and have to worry about payments. We also put together a budget that was based off our experience, both living back home in Calgary and our day-to-day -day lives, as well as our previous travels throughout the globe. Over the last number of years, uh, I've done a lot of research into motorcycle travel, and Sam and I have actually done a couple of trips where we had motorcycles in other countries like Costa Rica and Italy. However, um, this was going to be a completely different thing because we're bringing our own motorcycle. So we needed to look into how we're going to transport it, how we're going to insure it, um, where maintenance is going to happen, where we're going to be able to get parts, and whether I would do that maintenance work or we'd get someone else to do it for us. We also had to pre-book our flights on a wide-body jet in order to accommodate our sidecar. Um, so Sassy was basically our checked luggage. <laughs> um, we got to pack it all with, with our bags and all of our goodies, so that was great. So in order to receive extended health care for 12 months, we had to get in contact with Alberta Healthcare to provide us with a letter stating that they acknowledged we were going to be out of the country for longer than six months. Perfect! Another thing that we had to look into was communication while we were abroad. So we had our iPhones open to be world phones so that we could use SIM cards from any country. Uh, that way we could communicate with everyone on FaceTime, iMessage, WhatsApp, um, Skype. These types of things need to be set up before you leave your home country. Sometimes they require a phone number to kind of text things back and forth. So it's a little bit easier if you do it before you leave home. And we pre-booked our accommodation so that uh, when we arrived in Gatwick, we had a place to stay to get over our jet lag, um, just to get acclimatized to the environment, um, and also if there were any concerns with customs. So beyond that, we really didn't have a whole lot specifically planned. We wanted to leave it open so that we could kind of go with the flow. Uh, although we did have a few house sits booked before we left Canada. So we looked into getting a French visa for one year but unfortunately they just wanted too much information about where we're going to be staying for the entire time so and we didn't know what we were going to be doing so um, that didn't work for us. The good news is that as Canadian citizens we can stay 90 days within any 180 day period of time uh, without any special visa that is within the Shenzhen area so we could stay for 90 days take off for 90 days that would reset the 180 and then be able to come back. So based on our experience riding in Canada, Sam and I like to do about 400, 450 kilometers a day maximum. Um, that works well for us in Canada because the roads are nice and straight and the speeds are a little bit quicker. However, over in Europe we've found that 250 to 300 kilometers a day is a little more realistic for us. The roads are a little bit more windy here. Um, there's lots of stuff to stop and look at. So we like to you know, take the time to smell the roses, get some videos, get some photos, um, look at castles, that sort of thing. But we also use this distance to base where our next stop is going to be. I'm just going to be your arm candy. So just, you can look at me and look at the thing, but stop just touching shush, your face shush, and your shush, shirt. Shush, shush, I'm a human. <laughs> you are not. You are a robot. <clears throat> so for our accommodation, the goal is that we house it half of the time. And the other half of the time, we use such things like booking.com, Hotels.com, Airbnb, or maybe even contact a property directly and show up there. The criteria for our stay is that it has parking and preferably secure parking for the bike. Um, we also try and stay within $100 Canadian per night or less, especially in the low season. When we're traveling day after day after day, it is nice to take a break and stop for two or three nights somewhere where we can relax and get out and walk and see some sights and also um, be able to make our own breakfast and, and dinner so we get a place with a kitchenette usually. 
All right, so obviously this is a very quick overview of all the planning and preparation that went into making this midlife gap year trip of ours a reality. So make sure you stay tuned with our YouTube channel. There'll be coming videos uh, that will explain in much more detail how we made it happen. Stay tuned for more stories as we make our midlife gap year a reality. And for the rest of the ride, check us out at NowhereFastEverywhereCool.com. Subscribe for updates. You can also follow us and like us on Facebook, Instagram, and here on YouTube. We'll be seeing you again soon. Take care and keep on traveling.